podcast. This week's podcast was all about how to find your work life fit. And um, let me know in chat for anyone who has chance to fit the listening of the podcast into their work life fit so far this week. Uh, let me know if you've listened and uh, what's stuck. You don't have to have listened, obviously, to join Pod Plus, but if you did listen, did anything particularly resonate before I share some of the things that um, I guess I wanted to summarise and talk about today, uh, head into chat and let me know if there's anything for you when you're listening to podcasts that you were like, oh, that was a point that stuck with me. Uh, Reg, also, Reg, thank you for sharing the squiggly career cupboard with us. <laughs> that was going past our team WhatsApp last night, so thank you for that. Um, uh Found it amazing that changing the expression more alert. Yes, we're going to talk, Eliza, we're going to talk about fix and flex. Uh, let this reframe the dreaded balance juggle. Uh, yeah, so I guess our whole positioning was that, I mean, for, I think sometimes we just say balance without really thinking about it, because I think most people realise now that balance just is is not helpful to this idea that we can have everything in this kind of perfect equilibrium in our life all the times. And sometimes we just say work-life balance, but the way the words that we use really, really frame our thinking. So even when we say work-life balance, we're sort of setting ourselves up to fail. So maybe we just call it work-life fit or actually someone else um, on Instagram, I really liked it. They said, oh, I call this work-life choices. And I thought, oh, that's actually quite nice as well. Like it's not balance, it's work-life choices and my choices change. Um, really red flags. Yeah, we are going to talk about your misfit flags, everybody. Um, brilliant. <laughs> Olivia says the red Pringle so just for context for anybody that didn't uh, listen to the podcast years ago when I was working in innovation there was something called the red Pringle experiment uh, which wasn't it wasn't mine it was just something I read about that's always stuck with me and the idea here is that so often in our in our lives and actually as consumers we uh we do things on autopilot so the context of this was eating a packet of Pringles you know like when you're just like <coughs> the whole packet's gone um yeah that's me but the the point was that um you can interrupt autopilot with something that someone doesn't expect so uh the red pringle was like halfway down the pack if you randomly insert a different colored pringle it creates some kind of flag in our mind that to sort of stop autopilot and it was about kind of where where the where can you put some red pringles into into your work Brilliant. Okay, so lots of people listened, lots of some stuff stuck. Um, I wanted to do a few things with you in the time that we have got today. The first thing I really wanted to get a sense of, and I'm going to make this anonymous, um, was I wanted to understand today whether you think you have got good work-life fit, if you're like, it, it's working for me right now, or whether you feel that you have got not great fit. There's something, you know, there's something that just feels like you've got maybe more conflict than you have a kind of the, the kind of alignment that you would like. And um, if you are a regular pod pluser, please put the stars in. Green is my work life fit today feels good. Red is it's not quite where I want it to be. Um, and we might talk a little bit about why that why that might be as well. So um let's just have a look what we've got anybody who is new and who's just joined late and um, to do the stars that you can see on the screen it's just uh towards the top of your screen just a few options and then it's annotate stamp and star sarah has kindly put that into the chat as well so if you can get that you get the instructions oh so we're kind of as a as a group we're 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 a bit of both we're a bit of both um I think at the moment, I mean, I like literally this week, <laughs> this week I am like here, <laughs> I'm here. Normally I'm pretty good, uh, but I'm trying to get myself back on track. I'm like going to do my exercise today. Um, I might do something other than work tonight. So yeah, I think this changes for me from week to week. And I think that that is an important thing to recognize that this is kind of a kind of constant calibration is often how, how we think about this. OK, so we're a bit of a kind of a mixed bag as a group. Um, let me just share with you three ideas for action. Uh, and I'm going to do this pretty quickly because this is sort of what we talk about um, in the podcast. But just for people that did miss it and kind of just to kind of summarize it for all of us. And also because it's going to lead into one of the breakouts that we are going to do. So the first idea for action that we shared on the podcast was about fix and flex. And the idea here is that to have a really good work-life fit, you don't want to make everything so fixed that it creates quite a lot of pressure for you. So for example, yeah. that might sound like um, 
I have tried to do this before, by the way. I've said like every morning, nine till 10, I'm not going to have any meetings so that I can, you know, plan my day really neatly and I can go into the rest of the day feeling great. Um, that is, is it's just not realistic. It's me trying to fix something to my working week that is just not realistic because other people have other priorities. I've got to take the kids to do stuff. And it, it almost becomes so fixed that it creates a really unhelpful pressure for you. So the idea of fix and flex is to almost have some rules that you think are important but to be adaptable about how you might execute them so I mentioned exercise that is a really good one for me what is fixed for me in terms of my exercise is that I really like to exercise three to four times a week I know that I feel mentally better when I do that but what I don't do is say it's going to be three to four times a week and it's always going to be on these days and on these times because that just creates pressure that I can never achieve those things that makes me feel bad so what I flex is when I do it sometimes I do it at the weekend sometimes I do it in the morning depends if I've had some wine the night before uh, tonight I'll be doing it at 5 30 so I fix the fact that I I regularly want to do exercise but I'm quite flexible about when I do it and this means that you get a sense of control which I think is quite important in achieving your work-life fit that you feel like you have a sense of control but it ultimately means that it's 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 sort of achievable and doable and realistic for you. I don't know if anybody else when on I know a couple of people said that that idea of fix and flex resonated with them did anybody else have any other examples of of their kind of fix and flex so some it's almost like a the fixed bit is like a principle for how you want to work either in kind of the work or life something that is important to you that you you want to have consistent but you're kind of flexible about how you execute on it I've I've definitely got um sort of reading learning um I, or I, I mean, I try to read a book a week, which I know is a lot, but obviously we have to read a lot for our podcast. But um, I am very flexible about when when I do that. Sometimes I get up early in the morning, sometimes I do it in the evening, but I, I am quite fixed about for what I do. I always have to be reading, always have to be learning. Has anyone else got anything, that kind of idea of fix and flex that they, they are kind of currently working with? So Laurie says, I have two personal training sessions fixed and then I go another when it suits. Oh, I like that. I really like that. So you've got the two that are kind of in the diary and then the kind of the aim to have two more, but ultimately when it suits. And I presume, Laurie, if other stuff gets in the way, you don't beat yourself up about it because you've got those ones that are that are fixed. And um, what else have we got? Oh, Steve says, I'm doing a creative writing course at the moment. Very exciting, Steve. Um, and I set the target of 20 days a month rather than set days. Really, So yeah, that's really nice, Steve. So it kind of um, sort of accumulates. Oh, Lucy, I love that. Be in the playground for at least one school pickup a week. That's nice. I think I might do that. Um, my little girl started a school yesterday. I didn't quite, I didn't go. I didn't get to go. It's a bit sad. Uh, my little boy's gone back today. So I might, maybe I might do that. I think I might surprise them, pick them up tomorrow. Um, oh, Linda likes your approach. I like that, Rebecca. So I might apply this to the concept of monk mode mornings. Don't aim to do it every day. Yeah, I think, um, Rebecca, it's a really important point there. You know, when you look at other people's uh, work-life fit and you really admire it and you're like, oh, that's great for them. I think that's a nice, rather than fix, get too fixed around trying to replicate that, I think this fix and flex thing when you're starting something new, particularly if you're almost trying to copy something someone else does and see if it works for you, I think that's really important. Otherwise, like, let's say you, you set yourself the expectation of doing monk mode every morning, which for everybody else is basically like... Um, sort of like Cal Newport's deep work mode where you kind of you focus on one thing and you shut off everything else um but if you took that as an aim and you said five days a week I'm going to do monk mode that's probably quite a lot to get started with but if you were like I'm going to fix doing monk mode one to two days a week and I'm going to be flexible about when where I do that it might create more of a sense of um achievement momentum which makes it stickier for you over the long term Okay, so another one is all around the idea of misfit flags and heads up, we're going to do a breakout on this. So misfit flags are when you get a signal that the work life fit that you are aiming for might not be quite going the way you want it to. And uh, I think the easiest way of thinking about your own misfit flags, if you can't see them right here right now, the easiest way to think about these is when has my work life fit felt hard in the past? Like, when did it feel like I was juggling too much, dropping balls, you know, 
stretch was maybe becoming a little bit of strain or stress for me? When did my my work life fit, not fit? And what were some of the signals that I can see in hindsight? So, for example, uh, for me, my my biggest misfit flag is something I say and a way that I behave. So my biggest misfit flag is the words I'm fine. If you like if I say I'm fine multiple times in like a minute, I am definitely not fine. So if you ever hear me kind of go, yeah, yeah I'm fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, yeah everything's fine. That's the biggest, that's the biggest misfit flag that everything is not fine. Um, and Sarah always calls me on it. And also if I get very robotic, like if I'm like, I'm doing this and this, and I like lose all personality. And um, they are my misfit flags that I'm, I'm, I've, I've gone into some kind of robot mode to try and cope with the work and life. Um, and I know that because I've seen it in the past and sharing that now with Sarah, for example, as the closest person that I work with, she can sometimes call me on when I have a misfit with my work and life sooner than I can see it for myself. So that's why knowing your misfit flags is really important. It's important for yourself, but when you can share them with other people, sometimes they can see it happening before you can. I'm not going to get you to share this right now because I am going to get you into breakout room where I'd love you to talk about this bit with each other. But I think it's a really, it's a really important practical thing where you can help yourself and also help um, help other people as well. And then the last thing is all around conflicts that feel out of your control. So what we want to do is get um, more control over those conflicts. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we can do that. I did want to ask you, though, before we go into the breakout, do you feel when you think about your work life fit today, do you feel that you have, you know, basically you're in control of all the conflicts Like you feel like got my work life fit really like it's all it's all good. I've got control of it. I'm, I'm good. Or do you feel that there are some conflicts that are out of your control? So I don't know, a horrendous manager who puts loads of pressure on you or <laughs> I don't know. Ch ch children I might just say children full stop but do you feel like you have some conflicts about the work-life fit that you would like to get to um and some of those conflicts feel out of your control if you have none green all the way please give us your tips in a second and if you have if you feel like there are red let's just kind of recognize that this stuff isn't easy okay so a couple of people are saying no I feel like I've got it nailed amazing <laughs> you're gonna help us in a minute and probably three quarters of us go in I know what I want it to look like but it feels like there's some stuff that is out of my control that's affecting it Maria I love that Marie said in a lot of ways COVID has enabled me to get a better fit that's brilliant let's come back to that Marie would love I would love some of your tips on that um okay fantastic so that's you know that's what we talked about on the podcast we've got some other um uh some other tips and tactics that we shared on there um as ever there's the pod sheet which you can get from amazingif.com um which is the downloadable template that can allow you to sort of reflect independently and um, maybe Sarah D if you wouldn't mind sticking the link to the pod sheet in the chat for anybody that hasn't hasn't got it that useful what we are going to do now though because Sarah told me that you did a break out while I was on holiday and that everyone really liked it so I was like okay we, we obviously need to do more breakouts with Pod Plus and um, we're gonna put you into um a room with three three there'll be three people in a breakout room if any of you can't make the tech work or you're in a situation where you can't be in a breakout don't worry about it but for everyone that does want to be part of the discussion on this um I'm going to automatically put you into a breakout room in a second um, and the conversation I'm going to put you in there it's pretty pretty quick I'm randomly going to put you in there for about seven minutes. I know that's a random time, but just kind of quick, quick conversation. What I would love you to talk about in that breakout room is that idea of misfit flags. Either if you know them right now, what are your misfit flags? Like if you're like, I know what these are, let's share that. But if you're if you don't know them immediately, maybe share a time in your life, your career when work life fit has felt hard. And on reflection, in hindsight, what were some of the misfit flags that you could spot? So either you know them now, share them and see how similar or different they are, um, or maybe just take a time to just talk through with some other lovely empathetic people uh, who are all here to learn similar things about, in hindsight, I think these were some of the flags that appeared when I was finding that work life fit hard. Hopefully that all makes sense. Do not worry if you cannot join the room. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing now. I'm gonna go into the breakout rooms. Question to you, what were some of those misfit flags? I'd love to know, head into chat. Um, do we do oh sleep olivia yes yes that brain <laughs> when it doesn't stop wearing yeah really really good one 
Ah, uh, Emily, Sarah likes you. Uh, that's nice. I'm glad you made the connection. Maybe follow up with each other on LinkedIn so that you can you can kind of keep it keep it up today. Oh, Netflix binging. Kate, that's really interesting. Like when you're just watching stuff on repeat. Yeah, I sometimes find when I'm engaging with like what I call like low quality content. <laughs> like it's this irony of like, I have no time. Yeah, I seem to be wasting my time on low quality content. Not that Netflix is always low quality content, but you know, <laughs> some of the stuff that I watch might be. Uh, very vivid work dreams, Eliza. That's interesting. Oh yeah, Marie, coffee, the, the coping coffee. We all have coffee, but it's probably... That is actually a really, the coffee quota, that is actually a really good misfit flag. Oh, I love these. I'm going to save these, everybody. I think these are really, really good. Well, you know, they're not good misfit flags, but I think this makes it very real for other people to recognise what some of these flags are and see whether they have them as well. This chat is saved and I'm going to share, without your names, I'm going to share some of these misfit flags to see how many people kind of recognise themselves. A um, couple of minutes left, which I have an obsession I need to go on to, but I did just want to talk about this really quickly, that third idea for action about conflict. It is really useful for you to reflect on whether the conflict that you're experiencing is a personal conflict or a professional conflict. And I think depending on what the conflict is depends on the action that you take. I think one of the most important things that you can do if it is a personal conflict is A, like give yourself a break because personal stuff is really hard and there's often a lot of different emotions involved in it. But this is where you get into the need to ask for help like to recognize that you might need some help and to be brave enough to ask for it we have a podcast on asking for help which if that feels like the conflict for you might be a good um a good next listen if it is professional what i would say sometimes and sarah and i were talking about this last night before she got ill is sometimes if it's a professional conflict don't be afraid to compromise because just because you let go of something now the project that you want to work on the way you might be working it doesn't mean you know not now doesn't mean not ever but if it gets you through what we call a knotty moment you know when it when it all feels really hard if a compromise to a way of working feels like it gets you through a knotty moment then you can maybe get it back in the future and Sarah and I were reflecting on when our work life fit has felt hard and it's because of some professional thing the tricky manager the the way the work might not be working in the way that we want it to a short-term compromise can sometimes give you the capacity to do something differently in the future so just don't don't be afraid to do it because sometimes we hold on really tight to the way we want things to be and um it doesn't always help us in the moment was our experience okay so need to end it there for your time and for some sessions that i'm going to do next just to let you know um really really excited about next week's podcast Next week is on how to be a change maker. It is linked to the stuff that we are doing with LinkedIn. The Tuesday episode is Sarah and I talking about how to be a change maker. And we've got like a model of change um, that you can download and fill in. And then for the rest of the days of the week, we have a change maker episode dropping, short episode, 15 minutes. Uh, Martin Sibley talking about how he's being a change maker in the world of disability. Um, there, there are so there are so many. They've got Andrew McCaskill talking about being a change maker with kind of work resilience um, and, and overcoming kind of challenges of redundancy. So many brilliant conversations. They drop every day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, until we're back again on the following Tuesday. So we'll talk to you more about it next week, but heads up, that's what next week is all about. Uh, but other than that, we'll leave it here. Have a brilliant rest of your week and um, hopefully see lots of you, fingers crossed with Sarah, uh, next week, everybody. Um, take care.